Hey guys, welcome back everyone and good evening all of you. So guys, a quick question to all of you. With the use of IP. Okay, what is IP? Internet protocol, layer three addressing used to identify the location of device and identify the user. That's the use of IP, right? Okay. And at the same time with the IP, IP is what? IP is a connectionless protocol, first of all, right? So it's not a connection like a full. So uh, in uh, IP communications, what happens for the IP communications? You're not going to make a first connection, right? You're oriented like a TCP. They are doing right first. They are from your three-way handshake, right? And then after that, they are doing the data exchange. In the IP case, it's not like that. It's a connectionless protocol. We are not going to require any prior connection, right? No need to require. any prior connection, right? So IP is a connectionless protocol. If I'm going to use IP with ICMP, again, what happened? This guy is not going to provide the any kind of connection oriented service. Still, this guy is going to use the connectionless. The reason was, right? The reason is very simple to introduce the ICMP protocol, right? The reason is very simple to introduce the ICMP protocol to just provide the error detection or error. Sorry, what do we call all this guy? Error reporting. Because IP protocol does not have a mechanism of this person. The first IP came in the picture in the 1980 when the first RFC was introduced in the 1981, the IP, right? And after that, they introduced the ICMP protocol to just make a error reporting. Because in the IP, what happened? We can provide the communication, but the thing is that they are not reporting the error. If this person is available or not. Likewise, what happened? Every person, right? This guy A, and this is a B, right? A know the location is the HSR layout, Bangalore, right? And B, you know the location is the Delhi, Pashim Bihar. Nineteen eighteen is um, the RFC 1980 you are saying that see IP has a multiple RFC if you just go through the Google they have almost six to seven RFC so one of the 1980 RFC is just going to tell you like it's a private and public IP addressing okay so they have a multiple RFC and uh, depend on the RFC they have a different, different mechanism as last well. so 1918 RFC is just going to say the private and public IP addressing so the location a look a person is belong to the HSR layout and B person is belong to the Delhi location so this is what this is the identification right the user is sitting in this location right same thing in the networking world what happened guys same thing in the networking world what happened every pc or every devices has a ip every pc and every devices ha has a ip and that is used going to provide the identify identify the location of the devices and based on that we can provide the communication if you don't know the location of the device you cannot send your data traffic or you cannot send the any traffic, not the data, not the management traffic, not the control traffic. If you don't know the address of the device and the address of the device is known as a. IP. The address of the device is known as a IP. Now try to understand. For example. This is the PC, right? On this PC, right, the PC, PC A, and this MAC address of this person will be A, right? On this PC, you can give the IP address in two ways. The first, you can use the static, that always again to depend the manual process, right? And second, you can go for the dynamic. Now, the thing is that till this point, whatever the things we have discussed, right? All we have discussed with the static configuration. 
all we have discussed in the static configuration. In the static configuration, what happened? You need to go in every devices and need to define the static average. Okay, this PC has a one on one IP address, this PC has a one on two IP address, this PC has a 2.1, this PC has a 3.1, whatever the IP address you have to define. At the same time, with the IP addressing, you need to define the submit mask as well as the reason of to define the submit mask so that they will identify what submit we are using. So that they will identify what submit we are using. If you are not going to put the submit mask information, they will incomplete the command and they will not accept the command, right? The PC and the router will never accept the command. Without submit mask, the PC and the router cannot identify what submit we are going to use, right? So IP is very, very important to send the traffic to the any person, right? You can give the IP in the static way or the dynamic way. Now the thing is that, take example, if you have a 10,000 user, and that's not a big deal for the one company, right? In the MNC company, 10,000 users are not a big deal. It's not possible to give the static IP addressing for this person. Because if you're going to give the static IP address for this person, what happened? You will recover the loss of the time, right? And again, cost comes in the picture, right? Because you need to recover the more network engineer over there. Because for one network engineer, it's not possible, right? You need, at least you have to go for the 10 and 20 network engineers and every person has to uh, give the IP addressing manually. And second thing, what are you? Whatever the IP it is that you are going to give the on the user, right? You have to maintain the diary. Okay, for this PC, I have allocated this IP address. For this PC, I have allocated this IP address. For this PC, I have allocated this IP address, right? To just avoid the I need to maintain the diary, right? If I'm going to give the static IP address to the user, I need to maintain the diary. Okay, I have a, give the IP address 101 to this user, 102 for this user, 103 for this user. And everything I have to give the manually. Second, the third thing is what? If I'm going to do the manually, right? If I'm going to do the manually, how many things we need to give to the IP, uh, PC? One, we have to give the IP addressing, okay. submit mask, This two information must need to give to provide the LAN communications. Try to understand, we need to give the IP addressing and submit mask information for the LAN communication. But if I, if I would like to go for the WAN communication, what happened? We need to give the IP addressing. We need to give the submit mask information. We need to give the default gateway and we need to give the, for which person? And everything I have to define what? Manual. Try to understand. If I'm going to define the manual, in the manual, what happened? 100% you're going to do the mistake. Error will be there, right? Maybe take example on some PC, right? Maybe on some PC, what happened? You forget to configure, right? On some PC, you forget to configure. Aja. On some PC, you forget to configure default gateway. On some PC, what happened? You forget to configure DNS server information. So on some PC, if you forget to configure the default gateway, can this PC ping to the internet? Never. It cannot go to the internet because they don't have a default gateway information. Because here, everything I'm doing the manually and manually what happened? Error will be 100% there. So to avoid all these problems, right? To avoid all this problem, we have introduced the concept of dynamic allocation. Every single thing like IP addressing, submit mask information, default gateway, DNS information, everything I can assign dynamically. Instead of the doing a because a static has a lot of issues, right? The biggest issue with the static, the time consuming. 
This is the biggest issue. Right? Third issue is that we have an error. We need to maintain the diary, right? And the cost always. So to avoid all this problem, we have introduced the concept of what? Dynamic. Dynamic allocation of IP address is known as a DSCP stand for the first thing dynamic is what automatically right I'm not going to define the manually, right? This is the automatic. Host is what I'm going to give this IP address to the particular host. It can be a PC, it can be a server, it can be a printer, it can be a router as well as. And I'm going to configure this IP configuration via the protocol, right? Clear? Now, this DSCP, right? For the DSCP configurations, for the DSCP configuration, what happened? You need to create the and in this pool, you need to put some IP. So whenever the user will require the IP address, right? Whenever the user devices will require the IP address, they will take the IP address from the pool, right? Whenever the user will require the IP address, on a single DS, on a single Cisco route, right? On a, on a single router on a Cisco, right? You can create a multiple pool. You will have a multiple pool on a router. And each pool has a own submit. Submit in the sense of what? For example, this is the pool one, right? Pool number two, pool number three, right? And this all this pool are present on a single order. To identify this pool, we need to put the identification. We can say the CCNA, this pool name is CCNA, or we can say the LAN one. This is the LAN 2, and this is the LAN 3. And this LAN has some information. For example, I allocate this person 1.0.0 slash 8. This will be 2.0.0 slash 8, and this will be 3.0.0 slash 8. So from this pool, user will get the IP addressing. And all this pool are present on a single router, virtually. And this pool has to define by the network admin. You need to configure all the DSCP configuration, right, on this router by the network admin, whatever the requirement you have. For example, for example, what I'm going to do on this router, I say that IP, the first command, IP means what? The first command in the IP is going to tell you, okay, this command is just going to tell you, hey, okay, I'm doing the configuration for which person? IPv4, right? If I'm just going to include the IPv6, it means that I'm going to create the configuration for the IPv6. So the IP and second command is what? I need to configure the DHCP. And then after that, I need to create the pool. I need to define the pool name. That's what we land one. Once I put this configuration, what happened? This configuration I'm going to do on the global configuration mode. Once I put this configuration, what happened? Automatically, you will move in the DHCP box. 
And under this DSCV box, what happened? We need to define the full IP address. Which network I'm going to use? I'm going to put the submit 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Or either you can follow like this one network. So either you can follow this command or either you can go for the this one. Some iOS versions support the both of them. Some iOS versions support both of them. Some iOS versions support the only this guy, not this guy, this guy. And we have a space in between. Clear? That's it, right? This is the enough configuration, guys. This is the enough configuration to provide the IP addressing to the user. Enough configuration. And based on this configuration, right? Based on this configuration, a PC one can communicate with the PC number two. But if you want to provide, this is the LAN communication configuration, right? But if you don't provide the WAN con configuration, what will happen? We need to do like this IPDSC pool, LAN one, then I said the network will be 100.0 slash 24 and default gateway. And if you don't define the DNS server information, you can define the DNS 101. Or if you don't define the, if you have a multiple DNS server, you can define the multiple. So this will be your primary. And this will be a secondary. Okay, yeah. On the router, the command is default router. This is enough configuration for the band and LAN. Let me show you the first overview how the DHCPs uh, will like how you can allocate the dynamic addressing. Then we'll go for the packet level detail, right? I'll show you the first basic information in the packet register. Then I'll come to the, come to the packet capture and whatever the DHCP uh, like a Dota process is happening, right? So right now, if you just open this PC, they don't have any IP configuration. If you see, they don't have any IP configuration. This guy is a by default static. You can put the DSCP as well as right. Let's go in the router. Enable config terminal. Host name will be R1. Interface 0 slash 0. IP address will be what? Slash 24. No shutdown. Done. The basic IP I did all there. So this interface IP address is what? 192.168.1.100 slash 24, right? Next thing what? IP DHCP pool. Define the pool name. Network, I'm going to sign 191.60.1.0. Then if I'm going to put the network, take example, They'll come there. So this command is supported by the some iOS. If you go for the GNS3, it will support over there, right? In the package, so it's not supported. So on the some iOS, the, on the updated or whatever the updated iOS we have, all this iOS will support this command, right? No, there's no whatever the submits you have, you can define it. We can like uh, limit that range as well as we'll see that later on. So now if you see, I'm done. So if you see after putting the IPDC pool CC, what happened? I move in the DCP configuration box and we did the, all the configuration. I have assigned the pool IP receipt and that's it. Now, if you see, go through DCP and I'll get the IP address. I'll get the IP address on this guy as well as. I'll get the IP address on this guy as well as. And this guy as well as. Yeah. 
I haven't defined the default gateway, right? It means that without default gateway, can I get the IP address? Of course, we can get the IP address, but we can only provide the LAN communication. So if I'm going to ping, take example, I can write. So from here, this is the 101 IP addressing. This is the 102, and this is the 103, and this is the 104. But I don't have a default gateway, right? If you don't provide the default gateway information, you just need to go in the router, IP disable CCNA, and say the default router will be. Now, go on the PC. IP configuration for the static DSCP refresh this guy. And see, I got the default gateway. Same thing if you don't define the DNS server information, you can define it. So right now, there's no DNS server, right? I can go on the router. Sorry. CCNA, DNS server will be 8.8.8, .8 .8, right? Then go on the PC, static, refresh it. All this thing has done by the dynamic Reddit. I'm not going to define it on a PC and just define the manual IP. Everything is done by dynamic. Let, now let's see how this thing is going to be work in the background. Let's take example, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to open GNS3. So again, depend on the requirement. If you need a default gateway, define the default auto configuration. If you don't need a default gateway, don't define it. If you just want the WAN communication, LAN communication, no need to define the default router information, right? Hmm? Yeah, of course. That's again. Uh, if you want to, if you want to work for the WAN side, you have to define the details. I'm just taking a two routers right now. Okay. And I'm going to make this guy one is a client. Okay. Those guys, I'm going to make this guy's a client. And I'm going to make this person is a server. All done. On a R2, this router, right? This is the server, right? So I'll just define the host name DSCP server. Done. Interface 0 slash 0. IP address will be. Done. No shutdown. Debug IP DHCP. Server. As the events. Class linkage, and right now I don't want any kind of packet right now. IP DHCP define the name CCN. Hit enter network slash 24. What happened? If you see this output, after the one pool, that pool name is what? And in this pool, what I'm going to allocate over there? 1.1, 2, 
with CCNN. So this amount of IP address that I'm going to put in this. One one two. Two fifty five is reserved for the broadcast, and one dot zero will become my network ID. So user will get any of this IP address from this book. Same way, in same like I can create another pool IP address pool CCNP. And as the network will be what two dot zero. What happened? Which pool? So I can create a multiple pool on the router side, right? Now try to understand. What happened if I'm going to remove the pool? I'm going to delete this pool, the CCMP, and all this submit or uh, IP address will be removed, right? The complete submit. Now try to understand. Just need to go on the router side. On this router, what happened? If you see interface zero slash zero, IP address. If I'm going to define like this, this IP address is known as the manual configuration, right? This IP address is configured as a manual, right? That's then known as the network engineer. What I can do right now, I just say the no IP addressing, and as the IP address DHCP. I want to take a IP address on this particular interface from the DHCP. Got the IP. What is the matter? This happening. Do so. IP interface brief. From math manual, I'm going to use, and I got the IP addressing. Do so. IP interface brief. Sorry. Do so. IP uh, root. Clear. Now let's have a look. I'll say the shutdown. I'm going to release my own IP addressing. Let's capture this link. No shutdown. Once I'm going to put the no shutdown, what client will do in this case? Client will. Client is now going to look up. IP address. So what they will do? They are just now going to perform the discover. Client will look up for the IP address. Now this guy is going to perform the discovery, right? So in this discovery, what happened? They will put the source MAC information in your my own information, C two zero one. That's the MAC address of this particular interface. The user MAC address. This is the MAC will be what. Because I don't know where should I where is the DCP service person, right? I don't know where is the DCP service person, so I put the source MAC will be what? Distance MAC. Type field will be what? Ether type. What is size of this guy? Then after that, what happens? Source IP will be what? I don't know where should I put because I I don't have IP addressing right because I'm looking for this person. I don't have a IP addressing. Distance IP will be what? I'm going to make a broadcast right. Protocol number seventeen. UDP right. Source port number. This is a board number, 
and then after that we have a discover dhcp data the 68 reserve by so client and 67 Seventeen is the UDP protocol number. Like ICMP has one, TCP has. Or कुछ बताओ इसके अलावा. Right. Try to understand. this packet will send by the pc number one don't worry guys i'll give you all the possible scenario right i'm just giving the overview right now we'll go through the switch in between we'll go through the vlan in between everything right when the pc one will send this packet what server will do server will accept this packet right now try to understand if you go on the server side right on the router number 2 right this is the router number 2 actually the server side on the server side port number is open 67 right udp server if this guy is open on the server right on the server side then what happen it will give the reply listen to me very carefully udp 60 port 67 port number is open by default right if this port number is open on the server side then this message that is generated by the client the client will send this message to the server server will first see hey do we have a 67 is enable on this my server yes if this guy is enable then what happen it will give the reply otherwise what it won't and by default this will be enable you can one minute you can disable this port number as well as you can disable this port number as well as take example what i am going to do right now as a no service dhcp guys just give me 2 minutes right i'm just coming back have a talent go out on talent <laughs>
Yeah. Tell it. Where is the 23? Oh, you just asking this person? Yes. So guys, by default, this command 67 will be enabled, right? By default. If you just have a look on the client side as well as, So tell me one thing, if I'm going to enable it, right? if you see by default, this command is enabled. This is the hidden command. Not this one, this is hidden command. And what this command is going to do? If I'm going to disable you, what happened? Will my DSV work? No. I'll show you this thing, don't worry about that. If I'm going to disable this thing, it will not work. So right now what happened, and let them enable over there. I'm not going to disable this person, right? And now let's go on our router number one and say that interface, do swipe interface dot brief. I don't have IP address, interface zero slash zero, no IP. No shutdown. And IP address, DHCP. And have a look. Got the IP, right? One or two on the client side. Now have a look. This packet, client is generating to the R2. Open the first packet. Discover. Source MAC address. User MAC address, destination is what? Broadcast type is what? Source MAC CT01, destination broadcast type is IP. Internet protocol is what? Source IP? I don't know. Destination IP? Source port number? Destination port number? DHCP. Now let's do one thing. Done. Dynamic host configuration protocol. The first packet we have a discard packet. And the message type is what? Boot request. It can be reply as well as for the request. The opcode value will be one for the reply. Opcode value will be
जीरो होगा है तो कम आ रहा था ना समे ओके ना तो क्वेश्चन इज दैट वॉट इज बुट Request. Why I'm saying the request message because right now the PC is requesting for the IP addressing, right? That's why I'm putting the request. Question is, what is boot? Let's go to the history, Mr. Sir. Ninety, eighty. Look at boot. What is it? Ninety, Now, okay. अब बोर्ड पुलिस से पहले पढ़ लो आर आर पी क्या होता है दिख रहा है विजुअल विजुअल है फोन बड़ा खोदू क्या नस विजुअल यार वी आर ट्राइंग टू लर्न dhcp we are trying to learn the dhcp but again what happened the boot comes in the picture and when i'm trying to learn the boot rrp comes in the picture so in 1984 on the time right behind uh, before the 1984 what happened if the pc wants to uh, get a ip address in if the pc want to get a ip address in from the dynamically not the statically what happened we are on the time we are using the reverse rp protocol What this guy is going to do? R A R P. Take example. Whatever the PC we have, right? All these PC are possessing in my same LAN, right? And this PC wants to get IP addressing. What happens? They will request to the R A R P server. So what happened? This PC right now they don't have IP addressing, right? They don't have IP addressing. They are going to request to the RARP server to get the IP addressing. So what happened? This guy is going to make a request, and server will give the IP address to this guy. This guy is going to make a request, server will give the IP address to this guy. This guy is going to make a request, server will give the IP address to this guy. This guy is going to make a request, server will give the IP address to this guy. Before 1984. Now. If R A R P was there, then why they introduce the boot P, and then why they introduce the D H C P? Try to understand R A R P has a, some problem, right? The problem was very simple. This R A R P is only going to give the information about the I P addressing. That's it. They don't. They will not give the I P addressing the default gateway, not the D N S server information, nothing. Second problem, the RARP is what? It's layer two. Layer two in the sense of what? For example, if you have a one thousand subnet, right? How many RARP server you need to get? In normally company, how many VLANs you have? Twenty, thirty, forty VLANs. So how many RARP server will you get? Forty. because it's works on the layer 2 right but in the dhcp case what happened first of all they will give the all the information regarding the ip addressing second thing is what doesn't matter how many subnets you have doesn't matter how many subnets you have you will have a only one dhcp server for example your one dhcp server is present in the delhi location right and you have a sub branches in the calcutta bangalore mumbai pune jaipur you will get the ip addressing from the delhi But in a RARP, it's not possible. 
So RARP has some issues, right? It's a reverse address reason protocol. They have an issue that it works on the layer two, and they only give the IP address information. They don't. Uh, they will not give the any default gateway information. That's. IP वो layer three पे जाइए ना ना IP का information दे रहा हूँ उसको packet में IP दे रहा हूँ उसको मैं यहाँ उसको layer three नहीं बना रहा हूँ उसको routing करने के लिए वो server है जो IP का information उसको देगा PC को वहाँ पे उसको respond नहीं कर रहा हूँ उस packet को वो बस दे रहा है उसको एक somebody is requesting they will give the IP address into this guy he is not routing the packet layer three का मतलब क्या होता है तुम route कर रहे हो packet को ना I am not routing the packet over there After what happened? This RARP protocol was defined in the RFC 903. Simply, device such as a disk, uh, a disk list one can directly obtain the suitable IP address. However, because it's acted as a data link layer, it made the implementation of difficult on many server platform. Also, required that a server be present on an individual network. This line. Then after what happened? RARP was superseded by which protocol? In RFC 9081, right? In September 9085. The reason was introducing the boot P, right? The reason was introducing the boot P so that they can perform the release. It means that. You can have only one server for the multiple domain, which allow the forwarding the boot P packets across the network, allowing one central boot P server to serve host to the many IP subnets. That is not possible in the RARP. Only this issues has resolved in the boot P. RARP has some issue layer two, right? For the RARP, what happened if you have 1,000 subnet? You need to record the 1,000 RARP server. So they overcome this problem in the 1985, and they introduce the boot P. So in the boot P, what happened? You will have a one centralized location, and for the one centralized location, what happened? For this centralized location, for the whole, uh, many of the IP subnets, right? And that was amazing on the time 1985. But they only resolve this issue, right? Then after the boot P, what happened? They introduced the and by using the DSP, what happened? Um, I can provide the extra configuration, right? And the first time the DSP was used, the reason. I'll tell you one thing in the 1993, because in 1993 they introduced the concept of classless. So. Right now, guys, if you remember the RIP protocol version one, IGRP protocol, all this protocol is it's a classful protocol, right? EIGRP, OSP version two, BGP version four, all these guys are classless protocol. All this protocol has introduced after the 1993 because itself in the 1993, what happened? They introduced the concept of classless. So whatever the like, they are putting the wide extra configuration of the parameter group to the IP clients, right? Like a subnet mask information. Remember, right? Any packet that contains the subnet mask information is known as a cla classless. A packet that does not contains the subnet mask information is known as a classful. Something like this. This is the one packet that have a one or zero or zero or zero. This is a classful packet, right? And if the one packet we have a one or zero or zero or zero or zero subnet mask, this is the classless. So what DSCP allow you? They can put the extra configuration, 
and that's why the DSP was first defined in the RFC 51 in the October 1993. Again, they have some issues in this RFC. Then after that, what happened? They make some more uh, small changes and they will meet the new RFC 2131. And then after that, so on. This, this, all this RFC, right? RFC 1531 and RFC 2131. This all for the IPv4. And then after that, they have introduced the V6. So layer seven. Done. So hope this part is clear. What is the meaning of boot over there? Any question about the boot? Why the boot comes in the picture? Why the RARP comes in the picture? And why the DSCP comes in the picture? So how the journey was started? The journey was started like this. RARP, then boot, and then DSCP. RARP was 1984, boot 1985, and DSCP? Reason. So, what is the issue with the RARP layer two? And for the like uh, for the one thousand submission, we need to have one thousand server. Boot P has resolved this one. What is the issue with the boot P? They are not giving the complete information to the client. They introduce the DHCP. What is the next line? Hardware type Ethernet. Guys, look at the Many the other. Hardware type Ethernet. Your hardware, like your what cable you are going to use for that one, right? Your hardware type can be Ethernet, IEEE Net, Arcanet, Local Talk, SMDS, Frame Relay, SDLC, Fiber Channel, Serial Line, as well. This guy is just going to tell you what kind of hardware we are going to use. If you have a 0x01, that is just going to represent that. This is the Ethernet one. If you're going to use the frame relay in this case, what happened for the frame relay, your off code value will be changed with the 50. So hardware type is just going to tell you what kind of technology we are using over there. It's a Ethernet. Next line is say what? I'll give you the notepad. Next line is what? Hardware address length. What this guy is going to represent it? Six byte. Then after that, we have a hops concept. Here, the hops is just going to represent that how many hops my DSCP server is present. It's zero in the sense one. This guy is my, I'm sending the client is sending a packet, the hop set with the zero, right? If the server is putting a different, different broadcast domain, what happened? Those hops will be incremented by one. Next point is like, now this is a little interesting concept. ID. First of all, what is the meaning of ID? Identifier. Identifier of the particular things, right? For example, user has an ID card. You have, you have a Facebook account, right? You have an ID card over there. What is the meaning of transaction? Exactly, right? Peter and David. Peter 
credit and debit, right? Whenever you're making online transaction, you will have a credit and debit. So whenever you are making online transaction, at the same time, what happened? You will have a one ID, right? They will generate it. Here, the transaction ID in the client and server, in the client and server case, here the transaction ID is just going to represent that a logical session. What is this guy is going to buy? A logical session, a logical connection, we can say that. That meet between client and server. If I'm not wrong, this transaction ID size is 32 bit number. Hex format representation. So for every client, for every client to the server, they have a separate identifier. For example, this is the router, right? Okay, this is the switch over we have. This is the PC, this is the PC, this is a PC, and so another PC, right? So for this guy, we have a separate logical session. For this guy, we have a separate logical session. For this guy, we have a separate logical connection. And for this guy, we have a separate logical connection. A logical session means logical connection, right? One connection that I'm going to make. Session layer, right? Whenever you're making a, a like, a, uh, whenever you're trying to book a flat, right? What happened? You are making a, uh, like a uh, payment through the card and they will create a one session over there, right? And that session is only valid for the two minutes, three minutes, right? That is a session that I'm talking about. A logical connection that will make a client and router, sorry, server. And each session is going to identify some identifier. This will be a one, this will be two, this will be three, and this will be four. This identifier is known as a transaction ID. And through this transaction ID, all the packet will be synch. So if you just have a look right now, what I can do, there's this guy. And uh, I'm gonna put some switch over there, right? Take some router. Then start this guy and capture the screen. Interface 0 slash 0 IP address will be, sorry, not IP address, no, so not. Have a look, I have captured this link. And right now there's two clients right now we have. This guy, let's change the symbol. And I'm going to make this other client. All right. And uh, let's do one thing. I say the IP address, DHCP. This guy, and on this guy as well, no, so not. Got the IP, got the IP. So if you see this two person has a made the logical connection between this guy and this guy, and they both have a separate transaction ID. So if you have a look over there, DHCP, can you see that? Not from here, you can go just from look from here, mark. So from here to here, this guy's acknowledged. And again, this one. Can we see? So all this bit, right? All these four packets, we have a same transaction ID. And for all this packet, we have a right. So transaction ID is what one for the one client, 
second for the another client transaction id is what it's just going to make one logical connection between the client and server I'll, I'll I'll explain. Don't worry about that. I have just gone through the one packet right now. I'm just trying to explain the this part. Transaction ID. So this point is clear. What is transaction ID? So this transaction ID will be same. It will be same for all packets for one session. If you're going to make another session. It will be different. For example, if I'm on a client, once the PC will get the IP address, another time what happened on the same PC, I'm going to put the shutdown, no shutdown, what happened? They will make another session ID. Second elapsed. For this guy's going to be them. How many seconds, right? It took to get the IP address from the devices. Always you will see the zero, always. Next point is what? The boot flag. What I can do right now, I'm just going to make a next screenshot of this person. This boot flag. Now, what this guy is saying that the boot flag, if I'm um, not wrong, this is totally a eight bits. In the eight bits, what happened? I'm only going to utilize the one bit. The rest of the seven bit will be what? It's a reserved. So this is the reserved flag. These are, they are, they are reserved for the future reference. Okay. And even if you go for the RFC, they are not going to define in the RFC as plus. So if the boot flag is one, right? It means that this guy is a broadcast packet or it can be unicast as well as for the unicast i think so it will make a zero i think so if i'm not wrong we'll see that don't worry let's check it now i think so we have release yeah, it's zero so i'll put this guy Then depend on the packet sir. Right now the packet is what? The Discord packet. Right now the Discord packet is what? It's a broadcast packet. Can you see that? The layer two is broadcast and layer three is also broadcast. So if the packet is broadcast, I need to use which flag? Broadcast. Next information is what? Next information we have a client IP addressing, right? I don't know. Your client IP addressing, this will be also wrong. Next server IP address, I don't have any server IP address configured. Relay agent, I haven't configured the relay agent. It all set to the zero in the discover packet. Because I'm discovering right now, I don't know anything, right? Even I don't know which server, even though I don't know what's my client IP address, even I don't know the relay agent IP address. Nothing I have configured on myself. Next point is, what is relay agent? We have a separate topic on this one, don't worry. What is the next information we have? The MAC address of the user, right? So if you just go on a router one, and if you see the MAC address of this person, do show interface uh, fast and zero slash zero include BIA. Same person. Right? Then after that, we have a client hardware address padding. So if you, if the, uh, like, you know, the, if the requirement is not fulfilled, I need to add some padding bits, right? So I, I don't, I'm not going to add right now. So I'll say to the zero, 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 zero. If you're not able to fulfill the packets, right? You have to add some bits over there. That is the meaning of padding. Server host name, not given boot file name, not given, nothing is going on. Next one is amazing. This is the call. Magic of this. That is called. Jadu. Where koi mil gaya ka jadu? 
right? Magic cookies. Guys, this magic cookies is what? Is the extra information. about client and server depend on the packets. So this packet is generated by whom? Client and this packet is what? Discover packet. So they will put the client information like what is the host name of the client? What is the MAC address of the client? So if you see in this packet, they are sending the host name information as well as if you put the host name it will be ccna so ccna will be sent right if you just go on the router and let's set the set down this guy and say the ccna name Post time will be CCNA. What happened? Now interface zero slash zero, no sudden. See? So host name they are also going to put and then after that if you see the client identifier the client identifier they put the mac address don't worry guys on this option field 61 we have a separate lecture on this guy so we almost we have one hour one hour lecture on this person right what is the use of option field over there why they are going to put the option fields and everything why they are putting the even if you see they are putting the interface number as well as right so magic cookies is what they will just put the extra information. So this DSC master type is a discover, right? It can be changed according to the types. It can be have a discover. It can be our offer. It can be our request. It can be have a technology and also this one release right this all information i'm sending in which packet the first packet that client is going to request to the server that's a discover packet all this information. Anyone has a question in this first packet? All clear. What this number indicates 61 12 is a sorry. Uh this numbers are there no 61 12 55. Are the option field. These are the options number, right? And each option number has a different different use. They are just identifier of this uh, field, right? They are just identified this way. And each field has a different, different use. And depend on the configuration, right? Depend on the configuration, your option field will be changed. I'll show you this thing as well as, if I'm not going to configure the default gateway, what happened your some option field will be removed sorry some option field will be added so, oh, sorry if i'm not going to configure the default gateway right your some option field will be removed if i'm going to configure the default gateway your some option field will be added over there so option field is nothing but it's just going to add some extra information about the client and server and some extra information like uh, this box so one extra information another extra information another extra information another extra information another extra information and each box is going to be identified by the option number. That is a 53, some guys 57, 61, 12, 55, 255, anything. 
and each option has a different different meaning clear first part is clear what happened once the pc right will send the first packet what they will do they will send the next packet or in this next packet what happened we'll do one thing i will make it The first packet, the Discord packet that I am sent, uh, is there any range of option field? Yeah, that's the range is uh, like you know Nizam. Uh, it's a two fifty five up to you will get it. Type, source IP, destination IP, protocol number, source port. Destination port and DHCP. Copy, paste. Source MAC, distance MAC, type, source IP, distance IP, protocol. Source port number, destination port number, and then we have a DHCP, right? Copy paste. Source MAC will be what? User MAC address. Take example. I'm going to use the C two zero one, right? Destination MAC will be what? FFF layer two. Type will be zero x zero. Eight or zero. Source IP will be one or uh, zero or zero or zero. I don't know. Destination IP will be what? Broadcast. Protocol number seventeen. Source IP. Uh, source port number sixty-seven. So sixty-eight. Destination. DSC packet. Discord. Okay. Next packet is what? Source MAC. Now the server will send right. If the server will send the server MAC address will be the C two zero two for example. This is actually what. Broadcast in Cisco CLI, all the packets will be broadcast. In Cisco CLI, all the packet will be broadcast. Depend on the platform again, guys. Some packet will be unicast, some packet will broadcast. In disk discover packet, offer packet. Request packet, acknowledge packet. All this packet will be broadcast in the system. All the packet. Release packet will be unicast. I'll let you know why the release packet will be unicast. Don't worry about that. Source I will be what? Server IP. Yeah, I know this thing. Server know the MAC uh, MAC of the source, but again, it's a different on the platform, right? They are do, doing the different different things. If you go for the Linux, they are doing the unicasting. Source IP is what? Server IP. Destination IP will be what? Broadcast protocol number seventy. Source port number. Destination port number. Destination. DC packets. In this offer packet, what happened? We are going to put the IP information. We are going to put the times. Of course, I'm getting the IP as a dynamic way. So we have some like you know the times if if it is broadcast every host gonna receive that offer packet right exactly right but in that case what happened uh, like you know uh, the PC that has requested right they will have a MAC address as well as over there in the offer packet so if you see the offer packets.
see this part, uh, Nazim. This MAC is present. So based on that MAC address, they will receive the packet, right? So now if you see, Right. This thing, this thing is clear. Offer packet. This thing is clear. Type code is two. In the uh, discovery, it's, it was one, right? Ethernet is clear. Length is clear. Hops is clear. Transaction ID is clear. This part is clear. This part is also clear. Client IP address. This information, the client IP address, it will see in right. Okay. If you see. No, that's not. In the release packet. Why they are putting in the release packet the client IP address? Because client know what's my IP addressing. Try to understand if this client will get the IP addressing one one or one or one or two. The client has IP addressing, right? But what happened if the client is saying, okay, I don't want any IP addressing. So it will send the release packet. And in the release packet, what happened? They will put the client IP information, right? Client means client. Server IP answer. When the client is going to release the IP addressing. Huh? So when the client is going to release the own IP address, then in this field, what happened? They will put the client IP address information, right? But right now, what happened? This is the offer packet, right? This packet is an offer packet, right? In this offer packet, what happened? The client IP address will be set to the... Because this packet is generated by whom? Server. And what server is saying that, hey, you can use this IP, your client IP. Client IP address and your client IP address is two different terms are there. Client IP address is only set when client will release own IP. Yeah, by default, zero, 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 because that's right on the server is allocating the IP, right? The server is allocating the IP, right? So they will say, okay, you can use this IP address. And after what happened? Next server and next religion will be what set to zero zero because I don't have this information right now. And after the most important information, this part, the client MAC address. In a discover packet, you have seen the client MAC address information, right? So in the offer packet, what happened? He's saying, okay, this client had made a request. I will give this IP to the this client. At the same time, they have a same session. ID. Clear this point. Two things is happening. One, I'm going to put the client MAC address so that this packet is only for the that client. Another thing is what I'm maintaining the session. So this information will be not go to the goals by the another client, right? Next part is what? Again, padding. Host name is not given, boot file is not given. And then after that, we have a magic cookies. If you just have a look the cookies information compared to the Discord packet, right? Yep, I know. If you see the disk, not so release packet, go for the Discord one. If you see the Discord packet, in Discord packet, we have a, this option field, right? In the offer packet, what happened? We have a, this option field. The, again, I am telling you, the option field is just having a extra information. The DHCP cookies.
putting up extra information about the client and server. Client will have own information. Server will have own information. In the client case, what happened? They are going to put the own client identifier. We can say the MAC address, right? And in the server case, what happened? They are going to put the server identifier. This is my server IP address. Right? At the same time, what happened? After that, I'm going to put the extra information about this because this is the classless, right? I'm going to put the submit mask information. And now this IP that I'm allocating, right? This IP that I'm allocating, I'm allocating for what? As a dynamic way. So if I'm going to allocate this IP as a dynamic way, what happened? I'm going to put some timer over there. It means that this IP is only valid for the this amount of time. The default is what? Lease time, renewal time, rebinding time. Three timers up there. By default, when the server is allocating, right? This is the PC, this is the server. This PC will make a request discover packet and the server will give the offer packet. When this guy is giving the offer packet, in this offer packet, what happened? They will put the IP addressing information, right? They will put the submit mask information. At the same time, what happened? They will put the timer as well. The default timer is what? 24 hours. It means that this IP is valid for the how many hours? 24 hours. Don't worry, guys. I will explain what is the meaning of lease time, re renewable time, and what rebinding is. All this guy has a different, different meaning. This thing is not given in the book, so just have patience. I will explain you each and everything and what is the use of this thing and why they put the three timers over there. There are some reasons, right? All clear? Any questions? No? Update what they will do. Once this PC will send the offer packet in this offer packet what happened sorry once the server will send the offer packet to the client client will receive this offer packet and what what happened after that the client is in okay i want to take this ip address i want to take this ip address so what happened they are confirming okay i need your ip address please give me the acknowledge try to understand udp is a undeliable packet udp is a undeliable packet right they have a source port number, they have a destination port number, they have a padding field, and they have a checksum, right? But what DSCP allowing over there, DSCP is just going to make a reliability to that guy. Seem like a IP is what? IP is an unreliable protocol. EHGRP and OSPEP is what? It's a reliable protocol because they have a sequencing concept, right? Same thing, DSCP is what? Sorry, UDP is unreliable. DSCP is going to make a reliability. How? By putting the acknowledge. So what happened when this guy said, okay, it's a request pack. Uh, uh, okay, I want this IP address. What happened? This client server will give the acknowledge. Or in this acknowledge, what happened? Once this person will receive the acknowledge, they will allocate this IP address. So if you see now, the next packet we have, request, hey, I need this IP address. Whatever the IP address that you have given in the offer. Same information, Ethernet, hardware, Fox transaction ID, good flag is still broadcast, right? Client client IP just don't know. This guy don't know. This guy don't know. Client MAC address and same option field. Nothing is different. Only the thing is that if you just compare with the this packet, right? <coughs> if you just compare with the This Discover packet that is sent by the client 
and to this packet only some option fields are different previously this discover packet does not has any idea who is my server now this guy know the client is sending this packet right the request packet the client is making the request packet to the server okay i want which ip address this ip address and i am requesting to whom server for how many seconds that's you are giving in the lease time 24 hours after receiving this packet the server what server will do server will give the acknowledge now see the acknowledge same information nothing is different same information yeah everything is same right boot flag ip addressing next ip addressing client everything is same nothing is different once the server right will send the acknowledge packet to the client now the client will allocate the ip and for all this process right can we have a look over there not this one this is the offer packet and uh, this is my acknowledge packet then after that we have a discover packet all this guy right from offer to discover all they have a same transaction id every single one has a same transaction id same system was the pc will get the ip address now after it what happened take example come so this diagram once the pc will get the ip address what i am going to do on a pc side i am going to say that okay sir dot which packet i am going to use i am going to use the release packet and this release packet is what it's a unicast packet who is sending client to server packet is release the difference is what i am sending this i your this is my client ip address 105 and i am sending this ip address to whom this information i am sending to the my identifier anyone has a questions in normal dora process i am not done yeah this known as a dora operation anyone has a questions i'm done for today anyone has a question you can ask me i'm telling you, still we have a 8 hours class right in the dsp so i'm not done so we will go through the tomorrow again tomorrow nahi hai nahi ये तो तू पूछ रहा है ना आलस में जाके
I don't know why they are Cisco, why the Cisco is doing this thing, right? Even I don't know why they are doing. It. Because see, as for the technology purpose, they has to do uh, they have to do the unicast, right? Because they know the MAC addressing, right? Okay. Also, करना चाहिए था. I don't know.